Welcome to MCBI TV News. This is the December 2022 edition. I'm Ayani Hughes. Every year, Oprah fans anxiously anticipate the announcement of the media mogul's iconic Oprah's Favorite Things. Throughout 2022, several Black-owned beauty brands were named among Oprah's favorites. Bossy Cosmetics, Power Woman Essentials Liquid Lipstick, the Crayon Case Notepad Mini Eyeshadow Palette, Minted Cosmetics Red Matte Lipstick, Foot Nanny Olive Oil Pedicure Collection, Misho Beauty Nail Polish, Grace LEA Satin Line Turbans, Two for One Cosmetics Lip Gloss Collection, and Asutra Skincare and Wellness Products by Venus Williams all benefited this year from the Oprah Effect. Their products are sold in mass specialty beauty and department stores throughout the United States. Multicultural beauty brands have teamed up with Hollywood this fall. MAC Cosmetics and P&G Multicultural Hair Brands, My Black is Beautiful and Gold Series, all partnered with the Black Panther franchise, launching movie-themed collections. According to P&G, with these collections having been formulated by black scientists, PhDs, and dermatologists, this collaboration will amplify important dialogues about black empowerment, representation, and beauty. Hair care brand Urban Hydration celebrated this month's release of the Whitney Houston biopic, I Want to Dance with Somebody, with themed hair, skin, and body care gift set collections sold at JCPenney just in time for the holidays. Kicking off the holiday season, Xfinity premiered a new three-part docuseries spotlighting the social change within the beauty industry, as told from the perspective of many successful black women who galvanized it. Each hour-long edition hosts candid conversations on how influencers have helped change the perception of beauty. Beauty personalities and influencers, including Mickey Taylor, Alari and Naima Tang, actress Megan Good, and Melanin Hair Care founder Whitney White are among the numerous tastemakers who are featured. In retail news, Sally Beauty announced that it's closing 350 stores as part of an optimization plan to save the company $50 million in expenses. They also plan to close two smaller distribution centers, transferring the volume to larger DCs. In a recently published 2022 fiscal report, consolidated net sales for the year were $3.82 billion, a decrease of 1.5%, with a comparable sales increase of 0.6%. In a statement from Denise Polonis, president and CEO of Sally Beauty Holdings, the company's teams executed well, navigating inflationary pressures and supply chain headwinds, while remaining focused on serving customers. Starting 2023, Sally Beauty plans to focus more on leveraging the modern retail infrastructure it's built in recent years, enhance support to professional stylists, grow high margin owned brands, and increase operational efficiencies. Sugar Dough is one of the newest BIPOC owned indie brands to land in retail. Founder Aaliyah Mirandas, aka Sugar Mama, created the collection of sugar-based DIY hair removal products, available this fall at Ulta. As noted in a New York Post article, Sugar Dough's Sugar Paste is an all-natural, compostable hair remover that gently pulls hair from the root while exfoliating the skin. As an alternative to painful waxing, these personal care products claim to leave skin soft without irritation. Aaliyah Mirandas is a Target Accelerator and Ulta Sparks program alumni. She also won the grand prize of $100,000 at this year's Essence Fest during the New Voices Foundation pitch competition. Sugar Dough recently rolled out in 300 Ulta Beauty stores, and according to Mirandas, the brand has received the most enthusiasm from Black, Latinx, and Middle Eastern Gen Z and Millennial consumers. Fashion and lifestyle brand Pardon My Fro was one of five beauty brands accepted to the Walmart Start Accelerator in August 2022. Founder and artist Dana Bly takes this colorful brand that reflects her personal experience, including her natural hair journey, into the hair care aisle, launching in Walmart stores in 2023. MCBI's Abriel Beckham chats with Dana Bly about the brand and how it's making the leap from fashion and art to the hair product shelf at Walmart. One company's catchy name, Part of My Fro, is allowing women to be unapologetic in their natural hair state. A lifestyle brand that has evolved from tote bags, shower curtains, to hair care, and more. Owner Dana Bly says Part of My Fro is a movement for all skin types. I literally 
on Tumblr every single day, just trying to find people with afros and natural hair and loving the skin that they're in. And, um, right. and that's what part of my fro stands for. It's not just about the hair. It starts with the hair because, you right. know, the Black culture, our hair is our crown. Um, generations of us getting my hair done, lots of memories, good or bad. And so right. the hair was the beginning, but then I was like, body types and skin tones, all inclusive. And so if you look at my artwork, you'll see a span of, you know, light skin, beautiful chocolate skin, um, thick, thin, you know, just that whole variety of what Black women mean to me and what I see on a daily basis. Part of my fro was selected to display their products in Walmart from the Walmart Accelerator Program. And for a woman of color, this is a major accomplishment. It's overwhelming. Um, I'm anxious about it. I can't wait to see my products on the shelves. I literally um, in Walmart all the time, just kind of looking at the different products, getting inspiration from that. How right. am I going to feel with my own, you know, products on the shelf? So, um, what, so just really excited about the opportunity. So what came about is really just them discovering part of my fro, you know, in the atmosphere, just coming across a lookbook, coming across a viral um, post of like a shower curtain. They wanted to know more. Um, they were looking for, you know, brands um, to start this Walmart start program. So it was like five brands out of 200 that made it. And so wow. I was really blessed to be able to be one of those ones that they kind of looked at my design and they said, okay, we got something here. And so, you know, getting validation from Walmart of all places is definitely not a big, good type of, yes. Yeah, yes, a big thing. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then the good thing about it is the start program really is their first. So we're the first class out of this start program. Wow. So with that, we were able to go to Arkansas and teach um, going class and be taught by, you know, the Walmart PRs and the VPs about beauty and what they expect and what we should do and how we should do it. And just being the best brand out here for the start program. So I'm really excited about that. Part of my fro is currently set to have their products in Walmart in February 2023, as well as Canada. Their goal is to eventually be able to sell their products overseas and in other retail stores. Ariel Beckham reporting for MCBI. Cosmetics brand Amy Collet inks its first retail deal. Starting December 30th, Amy Collet will be on the shelf in 277 Sephora stores and on Sephora.com. Amy Collet launched in 2021 with founder Jara Njai blazing a path that has commanded the attention of the industry. In a year's time, Amy Collet was awarded the Newcomer of the Year Award by Women's Wear Daily, the Disruptor of the Year Award from Glossy, the Beauty Innovator Award from Refinery29 Incorporated, and the brand's mascara was a beauty editor's pick by Allure. Multicultural beauty brand curator 13 Loon just announced the opening of its first brick-and-mortar flagship store in early 2023 in the historic Larchmond Village of Los Angeles. MCBI reported in October that 13 Loon partnered with JCPenney to open multicultural offerings in 600 JCPenney stores starting this fall into 2023. This month, Sephora Accelerate announced its continued efforts to help prepare and bring more BIPOC-founded and owned brands into retail. The new 2023 Accelerate class includes Of Other Worlds founder Simidar Jackson, Karen Young of We The People, Sienna Brown of Glosshood, Mudos, Brianna Arps, Camille Martin and Leela Daravi of Seaspire, Alicia Scott of Range Beauty, and Brown Girl Jane co-founders Malika Jones, Ty Beauchamp, and Nia Jones. The class will participate in a six-month curriculum, receive financial support, mentoring, and opportunities to launch their brands in Sephora North America stores and online. Tracker, an influencer marketing software and data company, published its list of the 50 best performing beauty brands with influencers in the entire U.S. beauty space. Two black-owned brands made the top 50 list, both cracking the top 10. Influencers are hot on Pat McGrath Cosmetics, which was the number three performing brand, and Fenty Beauty landed at number seven. When Emily Sanchez decided it was overdue for the voices of Latino women in the beauty industry to be heard, she stepped up to the plate and created Latinas in Beauty, a community of trailblazing founders, professionals, creators, executives, and influencers. She shares with MCBI's Abriel Beckham how this collective is empowering Latinas across all sectors of the beauty industry. One woman is paving the way for Latinas in the beauty industry. 
and believes when women support one another, incredible things happen. Emily Perez, founder of Latinas in Beauty, says representing Latina women is her top mission. I myself am a Latina within the beauty industry, uh, and it was a space that I was I was looking for, right? right. So I myself uh, mentor Latinas and women in general within uh, the space that I'm in, but I was looking really for to grow my network. And I was like, you know, the United States is really big. The Latino right. population within the industry uh, right. is huge. But I was like, there really wasn't a space that we can come together and learn about who we are because Latinas, you know, we come in all skin tones. So we're a, a, across the demographic. So it's not always clear that you're in a space with a Latina. Latinas and Beauty is based in New York and looking to expand to California and other surrounding areas. It started with Emily and now has over a thousand women that have joined the organization. Latina is the is the present. We are the future of the beauty space. Um, we are powerful leaders as well. So really from a, a corporate side, the founder side, but also through representation in media, we really are driving that change. So for me, that takeaway really is how powerful the Latina community is and the impact it will have in the beauty industry. Latinas in Beauty hopes to launch a community platform in 2023 that allows Latina women to connect from all over. This is Abriel Beckham with MCBI. This holiday season, multicultural hair care brand Cream of Nature is showing support by partnering with No Kid Hungry with a $10,000 donation to help provide 100,000 meals to children. Through work with schools and community groups, advocacy and awareness, No Kid Hungry is working to end childhood hunger and give all kids the healthy food they need to thrive. This edition of MCBI TV News is brought to you by Bellamy Media Group and Associates. BMG works with beauty brands to deliver the best in SEO, website design, and social media ad management. Learn more about how BMG can help your business thrive online at bellamymediagroup.com. The COVID pandemic resulted in every beauty brand pivoting, finding new ways to market to consumers, particularly with in-person and experiential events. 2022 shows a big uptick in experiential marketing, but what does it really look like for beauty brands now that we're back outside? MCBI's Eartha Hopkins spoke with experiential marketing pro Ashley Gomez, president of Impressions of Beauty, to learn more about what's changed, what's working, and newer challenges reaching consumers with in-person events. COVID-19 disrupted businesses overall, particularly the multicultural beauty space. From in-person events to retail, pivoting became the theme for many companies to survive. Now, the worst seems to be behind us, or is it? Are beauty brands back outside? Impressions of Beauty President and HBCU graduate Ashley Gomez says she's about 97% sure things are back to normal. I think we're back outside. I mean, I think we are companies want to be out, people want to be out. And so I think everyone has figured out how to adapt to that new normal. Impressions of Beauty is a beauty marketing agency connecting brands to multicultural audiences at historically black colleges through events and programs. IOB plans, executes, and manages events from working with college ambassadors to activation design, ensuring memorable engagement for more than a decade, IOB has supported college tours for corporate companies, including Walmart, The Honey Pot Company, Cream of Nature, and many more. Event activations are customized to align with the rich culture HBCUs provide. The IOB team seamlessly bridges the gap between corporate needs and user-generated imagination. For example, during their school day's HBCU tour, they revised Spike Lee's iconic 1988 American dramedy film full of nostalgia and fun. Others are more intimate, such as IOB's Beautyversity experience, providing spaces for hands-on interaction, workshops, and personal development. And the reason that we kind of pride ourselves on being this turnkey um, service is that we understand when you're in beauty, particularly in marketing and beauty, there are so many different hats and roles that you wear and you just 
really don't have the time to dedicate to, you know, the small details of something like a college tour. And so um, what we what we do is kind of take that off of our client's plate. But what happens when government quarantine stops events? What does an event centric business do to maintain? Gomez says, IOB reinforced their commitment to connection by leveraging digital resources and launching their subscription company, Femaler. We knew that our clients needed us to get products in front of people, right? So trial, brand awareness, those are the things that our clients rely on us for. So we're like, how do we still do this, but virtually? Um, so we created a subscription experience for um, some of our existing audience and then also mm -hmm. had to acquire some new people um, to where we were still getting products out in front of people, but it was being mailed directly to their homes. The other piece of what we had to do um, was obviously just play up on digital, right? So everybody was doing IG lives and Zooms, you know, that was the time it was like, oh my God, another IG live, another <laughs> Zoom. But, you know, we had to get on that bandwagon too, because that was the only way to reach people. Surviving a global health outbreak and post-pandemic skepticism is no easy feat. IOB's success is a reflection of Gomez's talent and her strategic approach to understanding the needs, wants, and desires of her clients and today's consumers. No consumer in 2022 wants to just interact with a company that has products on a shelf, period. Mm -hmm. They want an experience. They want you to show them who you are, what you're about in a fun and creative way, um, especially with the Gen Z audience that we service. Regarding appealing to younger audiences, Gomez says students are interested in working for and partnering with brands that show a vested interest in them and their communities. This includes scholarships, mentorship, and impactful outreach. IOB continues to show the viability of the value of Black consumers in the beauty industry. In 2023, Gomez shares she and her team plan on furthering the brand by developing signature experiences clients can choose from and so much more. To learn more about IOB, visit their company website at impressionsofbeauty.com. This is Eartha Hopkins reporting for MCBI. Shea Moisture, inarguably, will go down in beauty industry history as the disruptor of the hair care category in the early 2000s, addressing the challenges and unmet needs of various hair texture types, resulting in what used to be the ethnic retail category being relabeled multicultural. Shea Moisture's disruption also presented a new narrative around beauty brands and social responsibility, contending that consumers have a right to know about what brands stand for. Since its launch in retail, Shea Moisture has consistently created initiatives that empower women of color and created opportunities for multicultural entrepreneurs. And since its parent company, Sundial Brands, was acquired by Unilever in 2020, it's invested and reached even more. The company's first impact report was released this month. With more than $10 million reinvested into the community, their Wash Wealth Repeat model is building an entrepreneurial ecosystem that supports generational wealth. Sundial Brands is led by CEO Kara Sabin. You can read the full report published on their website at SheaMoisture.com. To close this month's edition, here's MCBI's editor, Dwan White. You've either heard or thought what I'm about to say. I can't believe the year is already over. 2022 is done. And for the beauty products industry, this year, more than the past two, has put the picture of companies' financial and cultural health into focus. Yes, I know the disruptions of 2020 revealed whether beauty companies had the infrastructure nimble enough to properly pivot. It also revealed how companies chose to navigate their position and demands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And yes, in 2021, beauty businesses were in recovery mode, trying to figure out the new normal while re-examining their business model and marketing strategies, being forced to address employee relations and the grim realities of supply chain challenges. Much of that spilled over into this year, but by mid-2022, companies still pivoting instead of transforming, find themselves at the end of this year having burned through budgets just to stay afloat 
and with end of year financials that didn't move the needle when strategic change is what was required for profitability and relevancy. To paraphrase a wise and dear colleague in the industry, I've never been more excited and concerned at the same time about what will happen in the new year. So what am I concerned about in 2023? I'm concerned that after all we've been through the past few years, there are companies in this industry that choose to remain tone deaf to their employees and consumers. They believe working harder and selling more stuff is the solution to what ails their business. I'm also concerned that among venture capital investments, only 1.4% went to black founders and only 2% went to Latinx founders. We have to keep talking about access to capital. Another concern is that only four to 5% of professionals in the U.S. beauty industry, including the multicultural segment from entry level to the C-suite are black. DEI is a must. Now, let me leave you with what I'm excited to see in 2023. I can't wait to see how BIPOC founders who were part of several 2022 accelerator programs and winners of pitch contests scale their businesses and inject some new life into the multicultural beauty aisle. I'm excited to see how those who were part of the great resignation will re-energize to intentionally and creatively carve out some new space in the industry. I believe in 2023, we'll begin to see multicultural brands introduce innovative technology to the segment. And I'm excited about this venture. Multicultural Beauty Insider is now three months old. In the new year, we're pursuing several meaningful initiatives and partnerships that will ignite new conversations and amplify voices of the brands, professionals, and consumers behind this $6.6 billion segment. As usual, we invite you to grow with us. From our team to you, we hope you have a blessed and very happy holiday season. We wish you an amazing new year. Thank you for watching the December 2022 edition of MCBI TV News. Subscribe to this channel for our monthly news wrap ups and to view more stories and full feature interviews. For breaking news and informative content throughout the week, follow Multicultural Beauty Insider on LinkedIn and Instagram. I'm Ayani Hughes for MCBI TV News. Have a blessed and prosperous 2023. We'll see you in the new year.